Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we'll be talking about pelvic inflammatory inflammatory disease, STIs, and how the pelvic floor could potentially get involved. So pelvic inflammatory disease is an infection of either the cervix, the endometrium, the fallopian tubes, or the ovaries. And this infection can cause inflammation anywhere within the pelvic floor. PID affects around one in eight women and is most common in women, sexually active women, ages 20 to 24. This is part of the reason why the USPSTF recommends screening all sexually active women under the age of 25 for STIs. And some symptoms include lower abdomen or back pain, pain during sex or urination, abnormal periods or increased pain during periods, abnormal vaginal discharge, bleeding after sex, fever, chills, nausea, or vomiting. So you're going to treat with the appropriate course of antibiotic. However, we should be thinking about the pelvic floor if your patient who's been successfully treated for PID comes back into the office and is still complaining about pelvic pain, vaginal discharge, or any other sort of symptoms related to the pelvic floor. All right, so the pudendal nerve is the main nerve that innervates the pelvic floor, the genital area, the vaginal opening, perineum, and rectal opening. It has autonomic function or sympathetic um, nerve function as well as motor function. So it's different than most nerves because it has the sympathetic part or autonomic. Um, so when it gets compressed or um, inflamed, um, it can cause like fight or flight response. So essentially like a vasomotor response, think of sweating, um, rash, um, burning pain. So a lot of these symptoms can kind of mimic STI or pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, and again, if there was this inflammatory response with a PID, with PID or STI, you do want to, um, and they've been treated with antibiotics, this is a nerve that could potentially get irritated and cause similar symptoms. And Melissa, can the pudendal nerve actually contribute to vaginal discharge? Mm -hmm. And it can also contribute to vaginal discharge with that autonomic um, response, definitely. So this could be super helpful for our patients that come back and we do cult vaginal cultures all over again and STI screening and everything's negative. Exactly, right? yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. And they continue to have pain with sex or other types of pelvic pain. Okay. So as nurse practitioners, let's think about that pudendal nerve when your patients come back with these symptoms. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe and please share with your colleagues. Um, comment below to let us know your biggest challenges with pelvic inflammatory disease and STIs. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide for tips to managing your challenging speculum exam and also to get free weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to announce that we're developing an online course for nurse practitioners on pelvic health. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, you'll improve your patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize the field of pelvic floor health. We'll see you soon.